both averaging over 30 points with Butler having the slight edge. The Heat star shooting a much higher percentage, but Tatum with a big edge in rebounds. Overall, their number is pretty close uh, with both, of course, getting the job done because both of their teams are in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, I'm, I just have to go to Kern for this one right away because he loves himself some Jimmy Butler. But I am wondering now that you've seen what you have seen the last couple of days from Jason Tatum, who would you rather have as your number one guy in the playoffs, Tatum or Butler? Jimmy Butler. Because Jason Tatum played last night. Excuse me. Jason Tatum played last night like, like Jimmy Butler does. I mean, Jimmy Butler has been in the finals in the bubble. He swept the next year in 21. He took a team, a Miami team, who had no business being on the floor with the Celtics, to the back of the rim from going to the finals last year. He has dragged that team to where it is now. He scored 56 in one uh, series game against the one-seed Bucks. He scored 42 in another game. He is a force of nature who raises all boats. And he went 6 for 24 or 6 for 22 in their game 7 win, I believe, or game 6 win over the Knicks. Six. And you still felt when they needed a bucket – that's who they were going to, and that's who would deliver. He is, to me, everything that Jason Tatum will be if he can just get that Jimmy Gene activated more frequently. I think it's activated now, Giles. Well, I mean, you didn't feels... think that in the third <laughs> quarter the other night. No. You can't pretend I... that this was, oh, we don't remember what hey, happened 72 hours ago. Kern, I'm with you, and it's why I'm like, I love the game of Jason Tatum, and I think he's supremely talented, but I'm with you. I need to see it consistently for okay. me to feel like, yes, this is the guy that can you know, raise all boats. They can take But Jimmy doesn't team. go like this. No, Jimmy, Jimmy is steady Eddie in the postseason, which is really, really remarkable. But you would take, I'm assuming, Jason Tatum because he is more well, talented. I look at it this way. I would take Jason Tatum going into this series because I think Jason Tatum is going to surpass Jimmy Butler in this player. series. Yeah, Jason Tatum is a better, better player. player. But, but to your point, though, he's got to go out there and show that killer instinct, and we need to see him do that against Miami in this upcoming series, and he yeah. has that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, Jason is an improving defender, a better rebounder, but Jimmy, like Tom said, it just has those intangibles. He's just a dog. He's just a leader. He's gone to my – wherever he's gone, he's been – and he doesn't make a lot of friends. He's not there to be your buddy. He's not there to be the greatest teammate if you don't work as hard as he does. So that's why, like Tom said, he's dragged Miami, eighth seed, a, a lot of flaws, a, a bad regular season. The only thing, Jimmy, the flaw is he doesn't play a lot of regular season games. He's he's hurt and off and on during the regular season. When it counts, he shows up. I would still take Tatum because I take t younger, more talented player, but they are going to have to watch out for Jimmy Butler in this series because Miami wants to make this a real ugly series. Mm, physical. And, yes, physical, low scoring. Miami was terrible offensively in that New York series, but New York was worse. That's why they won. Can they be? Can the Celtics do what the Knicks do and make them terrible offensively again? Because I, the Celtics are clearly a better offensive team than Knicks. Like, how do you take Jimmy? How do you make Jimmy Butler well, six for twenty-four night in and night night out, and not let him get his fifty-six or forty-two? To me, Robert Williams just absolutely danced on Bam Adebayo's head last year, and so did Al Horford. He had a terrible series. Adebayo did. That's your second best player. Tyler Hero's not in the game, so you can send. Marcus Smart on him, and when Marcus Smart gets into foul trouble because Jimmy will outsmart him, then you send Derek White. When are you done with him? Send Brogdon, who is not a speed mismatch really with Jimmy the way he was necessarily in the other series, and he's strong. So they can do all of that against him. Plus, you can send Jalen Brown, who's a better defender, but he'll draw fouls on him too. But if Jimmy slows the game down and gets to the free throw line, because Jimmy does get to the free throw line, and the Celtics, when they're playing bad defense, foul too much. Mm -hmm. That's what Miami's strategy has to be. Jimmy just drawing fouls, getting fouling Horford out, Fallon Williams out, Fallon Smart, just getting those guys in foul trouble, getting to the line. That's how Miami is going to stay in this series if they do. I mean, obviously the Celtics should be heavily favored, but any team with Jimmy Butler you don't sleep on, you don't call this a sweep. Team defense, and I feel like you saw a little bit of the recipe in the last series because the way the Celtics had to help on whether it was James Harden or Joel Embiid, you got some of that. You just got to hope that Miami doesn't shoot the three. But they're going to shoot the three ball better than Philadelphia because they were terrible. But you just got to hope that they don't one go thing, off. Sorry, T. One thing that's interesting about, about Jimmy and who he is and how he plays is there's no confusion as to whose team it is. Yeah. Here there's a, okay, it's Jason's, but don't forget about Jalen. And, well, Marcus needs his, and, but Big Al – and not so much. He doesn't need it as much, but I think those other three do. When Jimmy Butler gives you the ball on the offensive end and says go to work, you know he means it. I mean, yeah. with those guys, it's, oh, well, 
you know, I, I have to be a little more aggressive offensively. I was too passive. I guess I have to demand the ball. And that's coming out of a series. It just doesn't happen. Oh, maybe maybe this changed things with uh, what happened uh, over the last uh, couple of days. All right, Celtics host the Heat in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals on Wednesday night. We're going to get you ready starting at 7 o'clock. Really working Tommy Giles over here. Celtics post-up presented by Eastern Propane and Oil, which is followed by Celtics pregame live at 7.30, brought to you by TV Bank. Stick with NBC Sports Boston for complete coverage of the Celtics all throughout the postseason. Celtics playoff coverage is presented by Arbella Insurance and your New England Ford dealers.